Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for another episode on Overland Garage and today we are building a winch guard and that basically is a hoop that goes over the winch that protects the winch and also allows me for access for some more lights because I don't have enough lights. But if you're into that, stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this. This is Overland Garage. So basically what I got here for tools, I have a soapy stone and the angle finder. And basically what I've done with this is I've set it on the truck bumper to see the angle that I need to make this stinger bar go to where I need it. And basically all I'm going to do is lay this out like so. And that's going to give me the cut angle I need to make this thing happen. So with that, I'm going to lay this all out and cut it out, and we'll start installing this. So we've got it all laid out in the old shoppy saw, and so we're just going to cut this angle, and then I'll take you over to the truck and show you the next piece. Normally I'd be doing this in the daylight, but since I run out of daylight too fast now, we are working in the dark. But my idea is to build a bar that goes up over the winch, like so, and back down and connects over here. And we're going to put some what they call chocks on the back side of this to support it so you don't get any of that forward and backward motion. But I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do right now. Now the key with anything is going to be want to be good measurements. So if you took good measurements, this is going to be roughly about what I want. So I'm going to bring my angle finder back out here, take a measurement from here to here, make that, and run my angle finder across that so I can connect this cross piece. And I might come down a little more, so I might have to take a little bit more off of this because I kind of want it to look like this. But you get the general idea. This is going to come up to about here, just the top of this winch, come over, and then back down. It's going to line up with this. So I'm probably going to take a little bit more off of this. First thing I'm going to do when I'm laying this out is use my tape measure and figure out from where this point here is in the bumper, which is kind of like a, a line that I made um, when I was building this bumper. And I'm going to come to the edge of this plate and find the center. This is roughly six inches, so we're going to say the center of that is three. So we're going to make a mark. And that's going to be kind of a center centering point on the same side of the bumper for both pieces. So I'm going to go over to the other side and make a mark on the same spot. Now this isn't an exact science, but what I am doing, I just recut this angle because 
I didn't like the way it looked. And you might have to do this a couple of times, but what I am making sure of is I cut this a little long so I can make sure that I have the right approach angle into this part right here. So basically what I may do is I'm gonna clean this up a little and I might tack it to the bumper. Now I'm gonna break it back off, but I might just tack it temporarily just so I can follow this up and get the exact angle because you want these measurements to be 100% accurate. And those little lines on the tape measure matter. So we're gonna tack this onto the bumper and then uh, we're gonna go from there. Now one thing I also wanna show you is whenever you're doing this, you wanna take and make sure that you're making accurate measurements. So I know that I want a weld all the way around this so I'm going to come out into the material a quarter of an inch because I want to at least put 3 16 or an eighth inch weld on this all the way around this so I need to make sure that I have enough material here so that that weld buildup will will meet up with this face plate and won't look all gobby but it'll look neat and it also gets a hundred percent penetration so I'm coming in a quarter of an inch and then I'm just going to kind of lay out where this thing is going to be. And basically, like I told you before, we're just lining this up. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but we want it to be as close to where we want it as possible because this is kind of going to be the... And we're just going to tack it in place. It doesn't have to be anything crazy because you're going to be taking this thing back off, but just enough to kind of hold it. Because you don't want it moving all around because i got to measure and figure out where I'm going to cut this angle. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. And then basically when both of these arms are up, I'll show you. We're going to see the whole thing kind of come together and I'll show you how to cut these angles. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it real well, but it's starting to take shape. So I've got these tacked on. Now, this looks terrible, but have no fear. This is the measurement you want to be really accurate with because you don't want this thing to look all cattywampus. So, I'm basically going to lay this exactly where I want it. I'm going to clamp it on, and then I'm going to take some measurements from this plate here on both sides up to the bottom of this. And then I can, I can actually cut, measure to where my cut lines are going to be. I can cut these, prep it all up, weld this thing all together, and then put it on the bumper. Now the first thing you want to do before you do anything, and I've already done some cutting and mocking things up, but the first thing you want to do is grab yourself some cardboard or something to make a template out of and make a template of exactly what you want to build because you can always cut and tape a couple of things back together but you can't cut and tape metal back together so I'm going to show you what I've come up with so what we're looking at I'll swing around over here now this is just some extra sign material I had laying around and basically what I did is I took some really good measurements on the truck itself and I figured out kind of what the height I wanted and what the width I wanted and then I just took my angle finder and that's uh, this bevel bevel square actually and um, I made the angles that I wanted and just cut this thing out and so this thing you can actually place on the truck see what it looks like and then once you are happy with it you just cut it out and attach it but like I was saying you don't want to cut metal because if you do that then you won't have any way to um, make it all work together and you're not going to be happy and you're going to throw a bunch of metal away. So this is cheap, easy, and um, doesn't cost you the cost of steel if you ruin it. So if you do your homework right and you take all your measurements right, you should come out with a product that you like. Now I got to do some cleanup and then I'm going to kind of just tack weld this thing together and go test it on the truck and see what it looks like. But I think this is going to come out good. Hey guys, so it's another day later and I had to go out to the old Lowe's and get some welding wire because I got all excited and thought I was going to be able to do the whole project last night and ran out of welding wire. So I got welding wire, I got tips, and I'm going to show you where we're at with this whole thing and we're going to finish this project up. 
So back at the old truck here, I got it kind of just sitting in place. It's not really tacked down or anything, but I want to show you what we got working on here. So this is kind of what we're going with here, and I got to finish welding all of all of this up right here, and then I'm um, going to tack it down to the bumper, add some uh, gussets, and then I'll show you the finished product once we weld it all down. All right, guys, so I just wanted to show you this is the uh, welded finished product, and I've uh, covered everything off, and uh, just going to continue to clean all these welds up, clean up some of this nasty paint, and we're going to go put a fresh coat of paint on it, and it'll be done. All right, guys, so I just finished sanding all this, cleaning up all the welds and masking this off, and now we're going to put the old paint job onto it. Now this is the product I'm using to paint the bumper with. This is a product called Steel It. It's one of my favorite products to paint with. And I'll throw a link in the description to this product down below, but this is a stainless paint. It's got stainless flakes in it, anti-corrodible, anti-corrosive and weldable. It comes in black and gray, and I think they even make a, an epoxy paint now that's high temperature. But this stuff is the best paint I've ever used, hands down. So this is what we're gonna be putting on that bumper. I'm pretty happy with how that came out and I'll probably be uploading a couple of pics to my Instagram and check out the uh, Instagram down here if you haven't already I'll throw that up there on the screen but um, I appreciate you guys tuning in and so it was a small project but sometimes you gotta do the little projects to get to the bigger ones and uh, I just you know so once in a while I get bored and I gotta add some things to the truck to make it a little better so I decided well I'm gonna add some more lights, so I needed that bar, but I'll show you guys the final product, but I thank you guys for supporting the channel. Give us a thumbs up. Don't be afraid to hit that like button and subscribe, and uh, keep getting out there and exploring. And I will be heading in to work on the Mustang soon, so you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for that. But until then, this is Overland Garage.